you looking at, mother? Get the fuck off me, man. Hey, what the f you look? I need my twenty dollars. I want one hundred dollars. No, 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 mommy, calm down. You won't believe how much this customer did when he couldn't take in the truth. Get the out of here, man. Get the out of here. Why are you standing behind me? It's a bright and sunny day at the pawn shop. But hold on to your hats, because we're in for a wild ride. This cool and laid-back Albanian dude strolls in with a bunch of ancient comic books. When I say cool, I mean it. Like, look at this. Bless. Ganti, how you doing? What's, What's your name? name? Ganti. Ganti? Yeah. Where are you from? He's got dollar signs in his eyes, thinking they're worth a fortune. But is he in for a surprise or what? Les and Ashley, the shop owners, give them their usual warm welcome. The customer proudly showcases his prized comics, claiming they're from the groovy 70s and in mint condition. He's even bold enough to demand a whopping $2,000 for the lot. What? They are shocked. How much did you want for him? I was looking around $2,000, man. $2,000? But our savvy Ashley ain't falling for it. She spots the bent corners and unimpressive preservation, grilling the customer about their sorry state. Poor fella, he's speechless. Didn't see that coming, did he? Do you see the edges? That's just one of them. Come on. No, actually, that's all. Ashley cuts straight to the chase and offers a jaw-dropping $5 for the entire stack. Yep, you heard it right. A gigantic drop from his lofty $2,000 expectation. Naturally, our customer isn't happy with the lowball and tries to haggle. But kudos to Ashley and Les. They hold their ground, eventually nudging the price up to a massive $6. Come on, you guys, just work with me a little bit. Give me something, you know what I mean? Six? I just... And that's when things go from zero to chaos. Our previously calm customer suddenly loses it, accusing the shop of playing mind games. Leslie tries to calm him down, reassuring him they're not joking around. But no, he won't take their word for it. He insists on verifying the authenticity of the comics, and Ashley's response takes him to new levels of shock. From the 1970s. So am I. I'm gonna f where you're oh boy, buckle up, because it's all downhill from here. The customer starts swearing up a storm, slamming the table like a man possessed. He's convinced he's being duped, and boy, is he fuming. But you're playing me right now, because this, I know this is worth way more than $6. The situation gets so out of hand that a burly bodyguard has to step in and escort him out. But wait, there's more. Right before leaving, he pulls a move that really ticks off another customer. Talk about adding fuel to the fire. Get the f off me. Hey, hey, what the f you look? Come here. Next thing you know, we're witnessing an impromptu street brawl right inside the shop. These two customers throw punches like they're in a heavyweight championship match. And let me tell you, it's a hilarious sight to behold. Eventually, the bodyguards swoop in like superheroes and drag both fighters out. Man, talk about a show. After the dust settles, our Albanian friend tries to save face with a final quip. I'm Albanian, baby! Well, my friend, you certainly lived up to that fiery reputation of yours. What a roller coaster of a pawn shop experience, folks. Next up, just another regular day at the pawn shop. People coming and going. Some happy, some not so much. Oh, bro. Hold on. Let me pull my point. Now, here's a guy who walks in hoping to get a loan of 100 bucks for his gold chain. And you know what? The receptionist happily agrees. Loan approved, right? How much would you like? $100. Okay. I can do the $100. Well, hold your horses, because this is where things go haywire. This customer seems all polite and even hands over his ID for verification. But then he brings up this 20% business, as it's written on the sign right there. The receptionist is completely lost, and the customer starts explaining how he should get 20% added to the $100 loan, making it $120. With my 20%, right? What 20%, sir? The sign right here says I get 20%. But the poor receptionist has no clue what he's talking about. Politeness goes out the window, folks. The man's anger instantly flares up when he realizes the receptionist is clueless. He asks her if she's ever seen the sign in her life, and boy, does he point it out right in front of the shop. Talk about intense. Sir, I don't know what you're talking about. Is you serious? Yes, sir. Ma'am, you ain't never seen the sign? Now, this angry customer won't let it go. His voice keeps getting louder, drawing everyone's attention in the shop. I'm supposed to get 20%. You said you were going to give me 100. Uh-huh. I get 20% of 100. We 
we see is the bodyguards on alert, and even Seth, the boss, steps out of his office to see what the commotion is all about. The man keeps angrily repeating that he's supposed to get that 20% with 100 bucks. When the receptionist refuses to budge, he demands to see the manager. Seth steps up and asks the customer to read the sign again. He patiently explains what it actually means. In another pawn shop, bring me in the ticket, and when you take it out of that pawn shop, I'll give you 20 But does our furious customer listen? No way. He's sticking to his guns, dead set on his demands. He even goes back and snatches the sign to show it to the receptionist and Seth. You can practically feel the tension, folks. If Seth wasn't behind that glass, this guy might have thrown a punch. Clearly, he's not thinking straight. That's when the bodyguard steps in and takes the sign away from him. Hey, stay up, my man. Let us go. Let us go. Twenty percent. The angry customer doesn't even give Seth a chance to explain. Oh boy, talk about rage blinding a person. This irate customer keeps shouting in the shop, demanding his twenty percent, hoping someone will back him up. Sir, why? Well, because you're false advertising. I guess you think I. You're not letting. But here's where things escalate. This customer challenges Seth to step out of his glass office and face him like a man. Whoa, the temperature is rising in here. But Seth's having none of it. He tells him to get out since he's causing a ruckus. And you know what happens next? He gets escorted out by the bodyguard. And get this, he tries to take the sign with him. I'm getting subbed out this I'm you down for the sign, my man. I'm going to take you down. The mother Gotta admit, that's a bit hilarious. But the bodyguard quickly snatches it back and the customer keeps cursing as he leaves the shop. But wait, there's more. To show his anger, this guy grabs a harmless plant and throws it on the ground. Huh, $20 worth right there, bitches! Aw, oh, man, what did the plant do to him? Seriously, what did the plant ever do to you, man? And off he angrily storms away. It's never a dull day around here, is it? This next lady has real poor luck, but it does not excuse her behavior. Wait, wait. Doors right there. Have a good day. Because you got a big dude, you think you hot? So this lady storms into the store demanding her stuff back, which happens to be just two TVs. The receptionist asks her for some ID and tickets as proof. But this lady is completely clueless. I need your ID or the ticket. Uh my what? She doesn't have any of those things. And here comes the shocker. Her boyfriend pawned off her belongings. Can you believe it? Now she wants them back, and it's a pretty messed up situation to be honest. She explains to the receptionist that she can't provide the required documents because her no-good boyfriend isn't even around anymore. He left her high and dry. Ouch, that's gotta hurt. Now Ashley, who overhears the whole thing, initially sympathizes with this poor girl. But hold up, that sympathy doesn't last for long, and for good reason. I feel terrible for her, but I can't help her without her ticket. This customer suddenly loses her mind, like all the anger in the world has consumed her. And guess what she does next? Brace yourselves, people. She starts yelling and banging on the glass window, demanding her precious TV. Seriously, that's not how you get things done. Even if someone is trying to help you, no one will tolerate that kind of behavior. Ashley, understandably furious, tells her to back off. The situation gets so heated that Ashley has to step out of the room to confront this unruly customer. And guess what? This lady has the audacity to threaten Ashley. Well, Ashley isn't one to back down, so she tells her to get the heck out of the shop. This customer is beyond crazy, I tell you. It seems like she had a truckload of problems even before she set foot in the store. What? I dare you. You now, the bodyguard steps in to escort her out, but oh boy, this girl goes on a rampage. She knocks over everything in her path, completely enraged. Come on, girl, you seriously need to chill out. Bye! I I uh Finally, they manage to get her out of the shop, but you won't believe what happens next. Unlike the previous guy who threw a plant, this woman tries not once, not twice, but three freaking times to break back into the store. I mean, seriously, woman, get a grip on yourself. This is just embarrassing for everyone involved. But damn it, we're not your local psychologist, neither. Go, Seth! Even the bodyguard has had enough at this point, and he can only imagine what kind of crazy exchange must have taken place. Man, oh man, what a wild scene that must have been. This next guy is the most polite guy you'll see, but things take an interesting turn. I'm trying to help you solve like, what your you issue. Mean? What I'm you mean? Well, 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 folks, let me tell you about this wild encounter that went down. 
starting with a seemingly innocent greeting. Hey, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Uh, well, actually, I'm not doing so good. Little did anyone know, trouble was brewing. You see, this poor customer was feeling down because his dear grandma had passed away. He needed to sell something urgently to scrape together enough cash to cover his rent. Now that's a tough spot to be in, right? Enter Ashley, a real gem of a person. She genuinely empathized with this guy and offered a helping hand. So the dude decides to sell his late grandma's ring, thinking it's made of real gold and worth a fortune. Ashley, being the responsible gal she is, takes a good look at the ring to verify its authenticity. And guess what? It's not the real deal, folks. It's as fake as a knockoff Rolex. Okay. Um, do you have anything? Naturally, Ashley breaks the news to the guy and asks if he's got anything else to pawn instead. But this fella, he ain't buying it. He's convinced that Ashley's got it all wrong, and he wasted his precious time chatting with her. Well, hold your horses, buddy. Ashley calmly reassures him that his time wasn't wasted and suggested he could pawn his TV instead. But oh boy, this suggestion hit a nerve. He starts acting all weird and uncooperative, throwing a tantrum. TV. You can pawn your TV. What the f I look like? Now, here's where things get intense. Ashley's just trying her darn best to help this guy out, but he's not having it. He demands his ring back and starts searching for someone else to deal with. I'm trying to do whatever I can to help him. This f not making no sense. And when Ashley tries to explain that she's simply doing her job to lend a hand, it's like a switch flip inside this guy's head. He goes ballistic, questioning Ashley's every move and acting all erratic. It's honestly a bit scary, folks. Believe it or not, this fella has the audacity to tell Ashley to lower her voice, even though he's the one causing all the ruckus. Talk about pushing boundaries. He even has the nerve to put his hand on her face trying to belittle her. And get this, he's not even listening. Lower your voice. Don't lower your tell voice. Me lower what your to voice. Do. Don't lower your voice. Your... He's busy with his threats, making Ashley's job even harder. But our girl Ashley, bless her heart, stands her ground like a champ. But wait for it, folks. Here comes the jaw dropping twist. Out of nowhere, a hero emerges. Bam! This mysterious stranger slams our angry customer to the ground WWE style. Can you believe it? And that's not all, folks. This hero then grabs the unruly fella and drags him out of the place. Because guess what? The dude still won't quit. On the ground. On the ground. On the ground, mother He keeps up with his nonsense, making threats and vowing to return for more. Seriously, what on earth did Ashley ever do to deserve this kind of treatment? It's downright mind-boggling, folks. Well, the last person on this list is no less than any other irrational person than earlier. If the item was worth the money, I would give her money, but he was a loud mouth. It's just another ordinary day at the shop when this woman walks in, hoping to make some quick cash by selling her jewelry. Pretty common scenario, right? How you doing? I'm good. Trying to find this here. Well, here's the twist. It's also quite common for people to claim that their jewelry is real, when in fact, it's not. But it all depends on how they react when they find out the truth. Now, this particular woman already seems a bit agitated as she approaches the counter to sell her rose gold earrings. Les, the shopkeeper, takes a look at the earrings and bluntly informs her that the color is not real. Surprise, surprise. I can feel you. Okay, so what's up? They're not real. Uh. The woman didn't see that coming. Les goes on to explain why the color is faded, indicating that the earrings are not made of real gold. Now, you'd expect her to accept the reality and move on, right? Nope, not this lady. Instead, she comes up with a lame response like, Well, duh, that's because it's rose gold. Seriously? I mean, it's common knowledge that when the color starts fading on real gold, it's a clear sign that it's not genuine. But this woman insists it's two-tone rose gold, while Les insists it's just some base metal. They were just base metal. It's not gold. Base metal is going to turn colors when you put chemicals on Come on, lady. Listen to the expert here instead of getting all rude. The fact is, base metal changes colors, not real gold. It's pretty clear that this woman just wants some money and has the audacity to demand $200 for those earrings. And as if being rude wasn't enough, she starts hurling abuse at poor Les. That real rose gold earrings, man, I need $200 right now. What the f is the Talk about being confused and disrespected. I can't blame Les for not taking that kind of nonsense. So the bodyguard steps in to escort the woman out of the shop. 
But guess what? She keeps insisting that she wants her money and even asks the bodyguard to check the earrings again. Seriously, lady, drop it already. Here's the funny part, and you'll never guess what Les did next. Hey, yeah. You want me to wrap these up? Yes, he did that. I mean, why bother with someone who refuses to listen, right? Eventually, the woman is escorted out by Les and the bodyguard, but she doesn't give up that easily. She actually tries to break into the shop not once, not twice, but three times. I can't help but feel secondhand embarrassment for her. It's like witnessing pure insanity. Oh, no. out. I can't feel. He's out. In conclusion, this woman's behavior was out of line. Instead of accepting the truth and moving on, she chose to be rude, abusive, and persistent. It's a good thing Les and the bodyguard stood their ground and didn't let her disrupt the shop. Let's hope she learns a lesson from this and thinks twice before causing such a scene in the future. My dad so truly believed that this glass could be something. Space for years. <laughs> you never know what surprises will walk through that door. Today we've got Seth bringing in something that's blowing everyone's mind. And boy is he in for a shock. Our friend Penny rolls in with a rare 83 T-top cutlass, low rider frames, and a fully customized beauty. Whoa, whoa, whoa! This is the stuff dreams are made of. These babies are like finding a needle in a haystack these days. And you can see Seth's eyes light up with excitement. Easy there, Seth. Don't get too carried away. We see all types of old cars come through the store. Does it do the four-wheel hop? It could if you wanted it to. This amazing car is decked out with four switches and can hop up to 72 inches in the front. And guess what? If you're up for it, it can even do a four-wheel hop. Talk about a versatile ride. If you wanted to, it it's equipped, but it's very rare we see a tricked out car that actually jumps off the ground. This car is the real deal, folks. It's got all the bells and whistles you could imagine. How often do you come across a fully equipped ride like this? Seth can't help but admit that it's incredibly rare to see a car that's not only fully customized, but can also jump off the ground. He can't resist showing off, telling us about the car's four hydraulic pumps and a whopping 14 deep cycle batteries. More batteries mean more power, right? Seth and his buddy can't resist the temptation to hop in and experience it firsthand. And let me tell you, they are having a blast. <laughs> now, Seth really wants this car, but he wants it at the right price. Penny, on the other hand, is hoping to fetch $12,000 for it. Will Seth bite the bullet and make the deal? Well, here's the twist. How about uh, four grand? Seth is only willing to dish out four grand for it. Whoa, talk about a huge drop. You can see the disappointment on Penny's face. He explains that he spent four grand just on the paint job alone. After some negotiation, Penny agrees to settle for 10 grand. But Seth tries to push it further, offering $7,000. You know he wants it. American. It's very rare we see a tricked out car that actually jumps off the ground. Penny, being the wise guy he is, doesn't take the deal. In the end, they part ways on good terms. Well, folks, let's hope Penny finds another buyer who's willing to meet his price for this fully customized car. It's always a thrill to see unique items like this in the pawn shop. And who knows what will come through those doors next. Stay tuned for more pawn shop adventures. But here comes another gem-filled day at Les's pawn shop. It's a waste of you'll time, see, Dad. You'll see, you'll see. We have a woman who's brought in some stones she discovered at her late grandmother's house. Her goal? To gather enough cash to cover her dear grandma's funeral expenses. Poor thing, she's not quite sure about the value of these stones and is expecting to receive a modest sum for them. Younger. How much did you want for these? Anything would help, like 50 or $100. Enter Ashley, who wants to assist but has serious doubts about the authenticity of these gems. On the other hand, Les is a big softie who sees potential in these stones and wants to help the woman out. What? It's a waste of time. This could be cast in jewelry. Yeah, it could be, but I think some of these are... Now, Ashley isn't on board with Les's plan. Talk about family drama. She's doing her best to convince Les that this is a complete waste of time. But Les is something up his sleeve. He's arranged for a gem expert to come in and assess whether the stones are genuine or not. And let me tell you, what unfolds next is nothing short of astonishing. Brace yourselves, folks. Holy Oh my God. These stones turn out to be the real deal. 
Crystal's life is about to take a major turn. All the stones, except for one, turn out to be plain old glass. But that one stone, oh boy, it's a game changer. It's a rare Burmese ruby worth a whopping $10,000. Les's hunch was spot on, and boy does it pay off. So we'll be able to give you $10,000. Crystal can hardly believe her luck. She's ecstatic and still pinching herself to make sure it's real. And you know what? Les deserves a round of applause for his intuition and faith in those stones. Well done, Les. It just goes to show that sometimes you can stumble upon hidden treasures in the most unexpected places. Crystal's journey from uncertainty to a life-changing discovery is a testament to the unpredictable nature of the pawn shop world. Who knows what other surprises await us in the future? Stay tuned, folks, because the adventure at Les's Pawn Shop is far from over. Hold on to your seats because this next guy is about to unleash some of the rarest goodies on the market. Five, six. Brace yourselves, space geeks, because this is going to blow your mind. So this guy rolls up with a bunch of crates, and let me tell you, the anticipation is real. We got a couple things. Uh, I have some Star Trek things, and I also have things from NASA. He's got some seriously cool stuff from the Star Trek universe, and even NASA. I mean, come on, that's pretty awesome. It's clear that this dude is a space enthusiast through and through, and his collection is off the charts. Honestly, it's a total flex. Like, seriously, you gotta take a look at this thing. This is all the kind of stuff that you're into. Now, here's the kicker. Ashley confesses that she and her brother aren't exactly die-hard Star Trek fans. But guess what? Every time they get anything Star Trek related in their shop, it flies off the shelves. I'm not a Trekkie girl, my brother's not a Trekkie guy, but when we get Star Trek stuff in here, it flies off. Talk about a lucky break, huh? This guy managed to gather all these valuable items from various Star Trek conventions across the country, thanks to his gig as a truck driver. Talk about dedication to the cause. But wait, it gets even better. He pulls out this kit from Paramount Studios, which is a seriously impressive piece in his collection. To give to radio station to run ads for the show. It's an authentic set that was sent to a TV executive when Deep Space Nine first hit the screens. Now that's some next level stuff right there. You can't help but appreciate the sheer coolness of it all. Here's the catch, though. All this awesomeness comes at a price, and Seth, our shop owner, is taken aback by the asking price. This was a thousand? Yes. Wow. We. Thousand dollars? Yes. We. Why? Why is that so Because much? it's custom built, and it all lights up and works. The guy wants a whopping $1,200 for everything, unless ever the savvy negotiator tries to bring it down to $700. It seems like a stalemate. But fear not, because Ashley steps in with her clever thinking. After some intense back and forth, Ashley manages to strike a deal. Seven, eight hundred. She works her magic and secures all these incredible items for just eight hundred dollars. Can you believe it? Talk about a happy ending. Everyone walks away satisfied. The customer gets a fair price, and our shop owners have some killer new additions to their inventory. Who knew that a truck driver with a passion for Star Trek could bring so much excitement to our little shop? It just goes to show you never know what surprises are waiting around the corner. I kid you not, this next guy just pulled up with a true gem. Check your taxi cab. I don't know about the original miles. Meter still- Can you even fathom it? It's none other than a 1982 checkered cab. Whoa, now that's what I call antique. Take a gander at this beauty. It's in remarkable condition. It's evident that the owner showered this car with lots of love and care. Kudos to him. Did you call for a cab? Did you call for a cab? Now, hold on to your hats because there's more to this story. Our daring duo, Les and Seth, decided to peek under the hood. Lo and behold, their jaws drop. Look at that thing purr. Don't you lose money because you get there quicker and it all goes... The engine looks splendid, almost brand new. How cool is that? But wait, there's a fascinating tidbit about this cab. Back in the day, they used to write the rates right on the taxi door itself. Talk about genius. This way, the rates were fixed, making it easier to attract customers. It's a shame we don't see this kind of thoughtful detail nowadays. The door. Did well, you see the rates on the door? Yeah, yeah, I did. The shut up one is one I like. And guess what? This car enthusiast doesn't just have one of these incredible cabs, but a whopping total of four. Four, my friends. 
and out of all his prized possessions, he decided to part ways with one and sell it to this very pawn shop. As long as the price is right and it's in good condition, we can make a profit. Boy, oh boy, Les and Seth should count their lucky stars. Now brace yourselves for the asking price. This customer is seeking a jaw-dropping $10,000. Can you believe it? Les, being the inquisitive one, questions the reason behind such a hefty sum for what seems to be a mere antique car. Sensibly, Seth suggests that the customer take the car for a spin, just to ensure everything is running smoothly. Perhaps then they'll be able to negotiate a fair price. Good thinking, Seth. Less ever the insightful one recognizes that this is not just any ordinary car. It's a masterpiece, a truly unique item. Plus, considering its excellent condition, they can actually turn a profit from it. However, much to their disappointment, the customer refuses to budge below $8,500. Sadly, no deal can be made today. Nonetheless, Les wishes him luck, and we join him in hoping that the right buyer comes along for this exceptional ride. Fingers crossed, Ashley, always the one to ask the tough questions, wonders why it's priced so high for it. Oh, and here's a fun fact for you. The Silver Surfer was actually voted one of the top 50 most recognizable comic book heroes in America. Pretty cool, huh? It's smooth sailing from here on out. Jack, Jack, get the f out of here. Yeah, I know you Jack, like you're gonna Get your hands off really? me. Really? You know what? I never liked you. Ass. I literally. Oh, you got you got hands. No, I'm you got you got me. She ain't by herself, my man. No, I call I'm sure you're curious about what happened. So let's not waste any time and jump right into it. So this customer walks into the pawn shop looking visibly upset. As usual, Ashley greets him and asks how he's doing. Turns out he's not doing well at all. Here's the reason why. Man, I'm not doing so good. No? My grandma just passed. I'm sorry. Oh, I was like... It's really sad to hear about it. Now, he brings along a ring that belonged to his grandmother. He wants to pawn this ring because he plans to retrieve it once he earns enough money. How sweet, right? However, it turns out that the ring is fake, which surprises the customer. Now, this got me thinking. Is he pretending or is he genuinely serious? It's hard to trust people these days, you know? But Ashley comes up with a solution to help him out by pawning his television. Can you guess what his response was? Me. What the f I look like pawning my TV? He starts getting rude with Ashley, which escalates into a heated argument. Then he demands his ring back, and not only that, he insists on being helped by another employee because he's annoyed with Ashley. And guess what happens next? Put your finger in my face! Don't put your finger in my face! Your your finger in yep, that's how he ended up there. Crazy, isn't it? This customer's behavior became even more disrespectful. Just to prove that Ashley was completely wrong and useless, that's when, as you saw, the big guy steps in and knocks him down. But he continues to yell and curse at her. Eventually, Byron forcefully removes him from the shop. You got me f***ed up. No, let's go. Huh? Man, get, let down. me go. Walk let me go, down. man. Just when he thought everything had settled down, the customer goes ahead and threatens Ashley, saying he'll come back to get her. Oh dear, that's the biggest mistake he made since entering the shop. We all know what happens when someone messes with Ashley, right? Well, brace yourself and see it for yourself. On the ground. On the ground. On the ground. Dang, the customer was literally scared for his life. Next up, it was just another normal day at this famous pawn shop called American Jewelry and Loan, located right in the heart of Detroit, USA. He comes in with his Xbox and immediately tells Les that he needs to get as much money as he possibly can for it. He knew that they probably get a lot of Xboxes anyway, so that does not set him apart from the rest of the regular customers. He reveals that he needs as much cash as possible, and it is all for his girlfriend. Wow. 300 bucks, dog. You don't have to raise your voice at me, you. The customer then starts cussing at not only Leslie, which was $80, which is way far from a whopper of $300. He even put his finger on Leslie's face, and that is when he knew it was time for this guy to leave. And he did not make it easier. Well, at least they wished him a good day. Moving on to the next. You talking to? All right, folks, let me set the scene for you. We got Sharonda and her son, Deontay, strolling into the pawn shop on a mission to get some bling bling for a special occasion. You see, it's Sharonda's birthday, and she's all about treating herself to some classic, fabulous jewelry. But hold up, here comes Deontay acting like he couldn't care less. This kid's got an attitude and thinks he knows it all. He's annoying both his mom and Seth. 
the helpful employee trying to assist Sharonda in finding that perfect piece. Can you believe it? Talk about a party pooper. A and get this, he paid $500 for it. So if he can buy earrings for that much money, why can't his own mother? All right, guys, brace yourselves for the next chapter in Sharonda's jewelry adventure. And finally, down to the number one worst customer. Excuse me, what do you think you're doing? Well, that is exactly what everyone at the pawn shop was thinking when they saw this customer, who seemed to have walked in with absolutely no decency or anything even close to it. How hard is it to remember basic courtesy and respect when entering a store, huh? I mean, come on! We're all trying to coexist in this space, right? It's not rocket science to treat others with kindness and consideration. Like, was he high as a kite or just a totally ill-mannered brat? And to make matters worse, he kept making everyone around him super uncomfortable. Just slapping the table like it's some kind of sick beat and making these loud, disturbing noises that were totally cringeworthy. It's like, can he not read the room and realize he's killing the vibe for everyone? Seriously. So first he forgot all manners and respect, and now he was taking it to a whole new level of creepiness. I mean, just take a look at this. Honestly, man, that's my girl. Yeah, I won't ask you, man. Completely unacceptable. Despicable actions. Perhaps he must have seen the imminent danger of facing severe consequences for his repulsive behavior. It's a relief that he had the sense to put a stop to his outrageous bullshit before things escalated further. It's moments like these that remind us of the importance of standing up against such inappropriate behavior. This isn't the only time Ashley faced such abuse. This one woman went way out of her line screaming and verbally abusing Ashley. Don't worry, I won't leave you hanging wondering the same. It is an Asus Transformer, not an iPad, and definitely not worth $500. Me, asserting herself as the undeniable queen of the room. Oh boy, I bet that moment sent shockwaves through everyone's minds. It was a talk about a mic drop moment. Ashley truly proved that she reigned supreme, leaving everyone in awe of her sheer badassery. Dude, just picture the chaos that would go down if your wife found out that you're selling her ring for some sick bike parts. Like seriously, can you imagine? You'd better brace your- And there's this next customer who's legit stuck in that exact nightmare scenario. I kid you not. The way he's being treated here is ab- That kind of betrayal cuts deep. It's a- If this dude's got any sense left in him, he better step up and start doing some major damage control. But man- And I am dumb- And in this case, it was through a powerful punch. The woman asked Ashley to give her the ring back, and she asked for it quite furiously. Let's get the facts straight here. What Ashley did wasn't some mean girl behavior, all right? She was just trying to get some clarity, you know? She wanted the dude who brought in the item to speak up, but damn, he was in no position to do that at the moment. It's all about seeking the truth and making sense of the situation. Mercy. This phone work. It's a simple question. Does this Picture this guy, all dressed up in his baggy clothes, trying to act all smart and cool. Classic, right? So he's claiming that he bought an iPhone from the store like two to three days at phone. Simple as that. But hold up a sec. Did he bother to bring the receipt? That's the million dollar question right there. Because you know without that little piece of paper, it's gonna be a bit tricky to sort things out. I mean, come on, it's like buying a ticket to a concert and then trying to get in without showing it. No can do, my dude. Receipts are like the golden ticket when it comes to returns and replacements. They're proof that you actually bought the item legit and can claim your rights if something goes wrong. Now, assuming he actually did bring the receipt, then it shouldn't be a major issue to get him sorted out. The store can check the purchase details, verify the warranty, and see what can be done about that faulty camera situation. It's all about following the proper procedure and making sure everything is legit. I ain't got it with me, I ain't bring it. So you're telling me you knew you had to get the phone exchanged and forgot the receipt? But Rich says they don't even sell iPhones for $200. So obviously my man over here is a scammer. Rich was very clear that he could look into it, but he needs the receipt. And he kept denying. Yet Rich asked him who showed him the phone so that he could double check. He randomly calls up one guy and obviously the guy denies saying they had iPhones on sale two to three weeks back, and the customer claims that he got it two to three days back. But obviously, the man didn't like the fact that he is getting caught, and you wouldn't believe what he said to Rich. Well, Mohawk, shut the hell up. My Mohawk doesn't talk. It clearly does. Clearly it's it does. with the goatee, too. Now the goatee does. Like, seriously, this dude went way overboard. First, he rolls up in here with a fake item that was never even sold to him in the first place. What's up with that, right? 
And then he has the audacity to start talking back to Rich like he's the boss or something. Come on, man. Rich ain't just gonna sit there and let this guy run his mouth without firing back. It's all about standing up for yourself and not taking any BS from anyone. Rich had every right to clap back and put this dude in his place. I mean, it's crazy how some people think they can just waltz in and cause a scene without any consequences. But nah, that's not how it works here. Okay, did that one work? Pull the things up over your ears a little because you did clearly can't. No way, dude. Even while Big Joe was escorting him out, this guy had the nerve to keep shouting at Rich, trying to prove his point. Talk about audacity on another level. I mean, seriously, when you're already in a situation where you're being shown the door, you'd think common sense would kick in and you just leave quietly. But no, not this guy. He just couldn't resist the urge to keep arguing and making a scene. It's like he thought he could still somehow win the argument or get his way by raising his voice. But let's be real here. Shouting isn't going to magically make your point more valid. It's all about having a civilized conversation and respecting the boundaries. But man, I can only imagine the frustration and annoyance Rich must have felt having to bear all that unnecessary noise. Send me a picture of the receipt from your phone. Damn, my man Rich definitely got that one stitch on his head for a long, long time. You gotta be lucky, I can't be your man. Today, a real gem walked through those doors. This guy, I kid you not, strolls in without a single thing in his hands. The suspense is killing me. What on earth could he be after? Brace yourselves, because this one's about to blow your mind. So a guy comes in asking to tattoo their logo and get paid for it? Now, I won't sugarcoat it. This idea might come off as a tad bit idiotic. But hey, different strokes for different folks, am I right? I don't think that this guy was thinking through this. My dad won't get it done, so why the f*** would this guy get it done? Guess what? Ashley ain't exactly blown away by this whole thing and finds it pretty dumb if you ask me. Just when you start thinking he's all about giving props to the shop, it turns out he couldn't care less. You got any tattoos underneath? Holy moly. This dude means serious business, I tell you. Brace yourself for the mind-boggling price he's demanding for that tattoo. Well, I'm looking in the range for about $1,000. $1,000. Yes. He is so crazy for that. Now we're in a bit of a pickle trying to figure out who the real idiot is, him or less. I mean, this guy is practically selling himself here. Come on, Liz, get your act together, buddy. He's gonna have a new tattoo. Wait, you wear a shirt, so you'd be covering it up. No, I wouldn't be covering up. I'd walk around. But here's the moment of truth. Did they strike a deal? Drum roll. Nope, not a chance. This dude wasn't willing to budge below $500 for the tattoo, which kind of makes sense, I guess. But Les wasn't about to cough up more than $250. 250 So hey, at least you didn't end up with that dumb tattoo, am I right? Now get ready for this next woman, cause it's about to get interesting. So this lady is trying to make some money by selling these coats to cover her bills. But honestly, the coats didn't look too great, and neither did her chewing. 415. Is that it, sir? Well, But Ashley was totally cut off guard by that. And seriously, the price is insane, don't you think? Now she's stepping in, offering some real prices. Let's see how the other person reacts to it. $40. No doubt that's absolutely hilarious. Now they're trying to haggle, but it's honestly gross and distracting when she chews like that. I mean, check out that silly behavior. How's that go? So the bodyguard is clearly here to kick her out, and you won't believe what she pulled off. That was just plain weird. But the next one is even weirder, believe me. And speaking of flirting, this next customer is on a whole new level. She's got a necklace in her possession, so she's not showing up empty-handed. But here's the twist. She's actually here for Ashley, or something else. Could it be her sneaky way of striking a deal with the pawn shop? She's got a good personality, and she's so sweet. I just oh, snap. That's the thing, guys. A lot of people pull off scams like this. And let me tell you, the way this woman starts behaving with Ashley is just downright bizarre and idiotic. But hey, let's not waste any more time on the theatrics and get down to business, shall we? Look that up? Yeah, I got a good price. <laughs> I adore. Now Ashley's starting to feel a bit uneasy with this whole situation. It's not every day you encounter someone acting all creepy when you've never even met them before. And here's the kicker. 
This woman insists she's been here before. But wait till you hear what the system records actually reveal. And trust me, it's gonna be a shocker. I look her up in the system. She's never been here, right? I can't find her. Well, well, well. Are we really surprised here? This woman just can't seem to stop flirting with Ashley. But what really concerns him is her dishonesty. And let me tell you, her response to it is nothing short of idiotic, yet undeniably hilarious. We've got ourselves a real comedy act unfolding right in front of our eyes. So you lied to me? I do like you. No, you lied. Now, I can't help but wonder if she was just playing her cards to seal the deal, or if she genuinely had a thing for Ashley. Either way, she managed to strike a deal, and now she's out of Ashley's hair. Mission accomplished, I suppose, now back at the pawn shop. And this time, we have a surprise because we've got a whole cast of characters in here today. Check out this lady starting off all cheerful and friendly, saying hi to the folks at the front desk. But out of nowhere, she does a complete 180 and turns ice cold. What's her deal? You lost this ring. This lady is all like, I totally came by here last month, I swear. But guess what? The computer ain't lying, my friends. The receptionist straight up told her that her precious ring is nowhere to be found. And you know what? It's on her. If she really cared about that ring, she should have shown up way sooner to claim it, but she did, so tough luck, I guess. You didn't bring it last month. You brought it four months ago. Now this lady is totally losing her marbles, you know? I mean, it's kind of dumb if you ask me. She should have just remembered where she left her stuff, but no. Instead, she's going off like some chatty old grandma, nonstop yapping about it. Give me my mother ring and let me see a manager in this bitch. I'll get you a manager in this bitch. Oh boy, we've got a real character on our hands here. This lady just won't accept any responsibility, I tell ya. Hey lady, newsflash, it's your job to remember, not his. This is where she's really taking the cake and acting like a complete idiot. And get this, she starts pointing fingers at poor Les, blaming him for this whole mix-up. You got me f***ed up. Well, no, you got yourself f***ed no, up. No, you got Can you believe it? I mean, come on, lady. It's clearly your fault, not his. Thank goodness for that bodyguard who swiftly stepped in and removed her from the scene. I gotta say, it's giving me secondhand embarrassment. Just look at the unending drama. <laughs> Sorry that your grandma's ring exceeded its time limit. You made the mistake and did- But what we've got next will blow your mind. So it's just another day dealing with annoyed customers. This lady was supposedly waiting for two hours, or so she said. But man, isn't she a little too aggressive? Oh, you don't ignore me. Can I get some help? I now Ashley jumps in to handle the situation, but this lady won't even let Ashley speak for a single minute. Such a big mouth. You need some better help up here. I've been standing here going on almost two hours. This lady just won't quit shouting. And to be honest, Ashley is so done with it but you won't believe what this customer does next. It's seriously shocking. Because he oh, told me. Excuse me. Seriously, what kind of lady does that? I get that she's mad, but why resort to getting physical when the manager is talking calmly too? Come on, lady, isn't that kind of suspicious? He's buying your ring, so of course you'll check it out. She's looking for $200, but couldn't handle it, I suppose. You won't believe what she does next. Seriously shocking stuff. Man, Man what the This customer walks in claiming she's here to get back the stuff she pawned off. But guess what? Sit. Buy. Not pawn. They were buy. Turns out she didn't pawn anything. She straight up sold it off. Man, this lady is clueless. She doesn't have her ticket and she expects someone to help her out? Seth tries to intervene, but it's pointless because this woman just can't grasp the fact that without the ticket, there's nothing anyone can do. If you bring me the ticket, I'll be more than happy to take care of it for you. I need my Show me the ticket. I the don't ticket have my ticket. Now she's all paranoid thinking people are trying to deceive her, and she's planning to take matters into her own hands. Uh-oh, that can't end well. At this point, it's best to just walk away, lady. Phone call. A little phone call. Be up here This lady is refusing to leave until her brother shows up to give the pawn shop owners a beating. How messed up is that? Seriously, this woman needs to just shut up. Better be ready. For what? Because my Better brother be ready. Come up here and, and do what? See how much made me mess with the Bro, what is she doing, man? man? Yo, man. If you steal something, you're a thief. I mean, look up in the dictionary. That's what it means. Dad parenting.
The pawn shop door swings open, and a furious mother charges in like a bull in a china shop, demanding to know if her daughter sold her precious ring here. How you gonna sit here and tell me? You told me you brought it here, right? Yeah. It best be here. I don't have it. Now what we gonna do? There's nothing what I the can do. What the hell we gonna do? Cause I need There's my nothing I can do. Don't just I have watch to have my her mother. ID I or... don't want my ring. Yeah, not a good impression anyway. To defuse the chaos, Ashley stepped up. Let's see if it helped or not. You took your grandma's ring. Yes. And you pawned it. When? The day before yesterday. Okay. So where's your ticket? I don't have it. Okay, so let me ask you a question as a mother. Did you press charges against your daughter for being a thief? I'm not pressing no charges against my daughter. Then you can't get it back. No, 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 no. Get a grip on yourself, mommy. The woman just won't listen to anyone. Man, where do such people come from? No wonder her daughter's acting the way she is. I came in here to try to resolve the situation. We gave you one to figure it out. Uh-uh, no, no. Hey, get off him. You better figure out some way to get your mom's ring back. Watch when I get your ass home. See? Now you got labeled as a thief. Coin thief. Ooh, there's a new player in the game. This fella's got a quarter that supposedly belonged to JFK when he got the axe. And guess who he's trying to sell it to? Less of all people. This should be interesting. I need a second person to touch it. Might see this, man? Who is the first? JFK, man. JFK. Hell yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get 30000 for it, man. Really? Our friend here needs to know that he's trying to close a deal with the boss. Yup, the big cheese himself. You know what that means? He better have some answers ready. I don't think this guy even knows who the president is today. What year did they put Lincoln on the quarter? 67. Who's on a penny? Bill Clinton, whatever his damn name is. Well, he means you'll have to take your business elsewhere if you want to avoid glitter and dancing. But anyway, this punk got mad, and here's what happened next. Want to go out for the pass? Please. Man, follow him up. Much, man. Oh, man. Oh, you forgot to ask you. Let's go. See how mom made me mess with the Oh, man. What? Man. Bro, what is you doing, man? Get on, man. Pink coat. The woman swaggers into the pawn shop, yelling that the pink coat is hers. Guess who she encounters for the argument? That's right. It's less. What would you do if a man strolls into your shop with a massive bag? Obviously, you can't wait to find out what's in there. This is what this sneaky guy did. Man, this is my bag. Okay. What's in it? Tell me what that means, because maybe I don't understand what you're talking about. Looks like the man had a top secret mission with this bag didn't let anyone unzip it. In my opinion, he's a freak. See for yourself how the whole scenario went down. You can't bring in a big bag into a business and not expect to have it searched. Oh, oh, oh my God. My man, oh my God. What the hell? Wow, that was unexpected. I can't believe what just happened. I might need a moment to process this. It's not something any of us were prepared for. So I'm just gonna let things lie. If I see anything on the news, I'll report that he was here. I saw it. For all I know, there's a half-naked man in a gold G-string running around the streets of Detroit. Holy Pregnancy deal. A pregnant mom walks into a pawn shop, excited to purchase a wooden horse for her unborn baby. I was just here last week, and uh -huh. I seen this horse that y'all had, and I really want it. I didn't have the money last week. For sure. You saw it? Where is it? It's right over here. Sure. What do you do? Well, I'm due next month. Oh, it's your first? Yes, it is. Oh, but the down part was that she has no money. How unfortunate, considering her husband left her. Hearing her story, Ashley gets all empathetic and decides to give away the object to the yet-to-be-born baby mama. This is what she has to say. Let me tell you what I can do for you. You give me the five, and then my gift to you is the remaining 15. That'll be great. That'll be really great. Okay? It means so much to me. Well, everything went well for the lady, and even Ashley was proud of herself for doing a good deed. Until this happened. Of you and the baby. Wedding ring crook. 
Looks like someone's sleeping on the couch tonight. This wife found a pawn slip for her wedding ring in her husband's wallet. Time to hit up the pawn shop and get it back. So your husband stole your wedding ring? Yes, he took it because we're having financial problems. I get why he did it. I just want to pay for it and get my ring back. Did you make a police report? No, I didn't make a police report. The hell am I going to make a police report for? The angry wife missed the no ticket, no service memo. Ashley can only work with what she's got, lady. Don't shoot the messenger. Let me explain to you how this works. First of all, I don't just look up somebody's name and give you their information. I didn't ask you to give me the information. I asked you to look it up. I also... How hard is that? You look it up in the computer, you take it, I pay for it, we leave. It's not that hard. Okay, I know it's not funny, but Ashley's solution was hilarious. Here's how she managed the situation. Nobody saw it coming. It is that hard. Take your pretty little feet. Walk your pretty little legs no, out of here. You are not. Just go back I'm there and give me my f How hard is that? You can't just go back there and type in a f name. It's time to go. The only person she should be threatening is your husband. Invisible friend. A guy trying to pawn a fake bracelet walks into a store with his imaginary friend. However, Les was skeptical until the friend started haggling for a better price. My partner right here, Robert, we want to pawn this. You're who? My partner, Robert, right here. Here's a person talking to an invisible friend, but I didn't see him. Well, 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 Robert, the imaginary friend, needs a reality check. Maybe this dude should stick to playing pretend more believably. After all, the pawnbroker here is no fool. Robert, tell him, tell him, Robert, tell him. This is worth 200, 200. It was a stainless steel bracelet that we don't sell here for $10. There was no way he was gonna get anything. However, his get-rich-quick scheme wasn't so quick after all. The customer's face fell faster than a lead balloon. This is how we reacted to the situation. And he talking about he can't give me nothing for this. What the f is that? No, come on, let's go to the outside. I gotta look at it a little more better. All right. I ain't leaving. I'm not, I'm not leaving, man, until I get some money. I'm not leaving, man. That man, let me go. Stolen telly. This lady's ex-boyfriend pawns her TV for some quick cash. With determination, she enters the pawn shop and confidently declares, I'm here to rescue my kidnapped TV. I need to get my stuff, my two TVs. I need your ID or the ticket. I don't have no ticket or no ID. My stuff was stolen in pawn from my boyfriend. We need him or the ticket or... What you need him for? He ain't even nowhere around. Ah, the policy police strike again. No ticket, no claims allowed. And in a spectacular display of logic defiance, here's how she responded to the situation. Listen! Don't put it on my way! I'm not trying to get my bitch! What? If I'm gonna have to get ratchet? You don't pound on my way! I don't know what the f you can! Yes, I can! No, you can't! Oh boy, it seems like someone stirred the hornet's nest. But fear not, Ashley swiftly shut down those threats like a master conductor. Lesson learned, universe. Okay. No, please. Bye. See ya. No, 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 no. You're crazy. Yeah, I am crazy. And I show you crazy. No password. Oh boy, trying to pawn that laptop at the store, but conveniently forgetting your password. <laughs> Suspicious much? Brace yourself for some dose of skeptical boss lady. You forgot the password. Yeah. How do you forget the? When's the last time you used this? About a month ago. You forgot your password? Yeah. Try again. She didn't know how to get into this computer. She didn't know the password. She didn't know the username. Oh, so you didn't just find this laptop aimlessly wandering around in the wilderness and thought, hey, I should take this. I'm sure the lady was adamant that it's my laptop. How much did you want to get on this today? At least 165. Uh, how's 125 for you? No, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I need at least 165. I mean, I can't, I can't do 125. All right, I can do 150, and that's what I can do. Okay, can you do 165 or not? Blink of an eye, the laptop lady became wild and crazy. Her responses and shouts made everyone wonder if she was off her rocker. I am a grown ass woman. You're not acting well, like one. Like I said, like I am a grown I ass You're woman. You're not acting I'm, like I'm one. I'm not gonna sit here and argue with you. Like Listen, I said, I can don't. take my business somewhere else. Goodbye. You have a deal. Our recognizable comic book heroes. Silver Surfer. Oh, guess what? We've got a bona fide comic enthusiast here. Big surprise. Like, who isn't, right? Hey, genius. If you're after that dream price, maybe hit up a comic store.
Selling your treasure trove at a pawn shop? Yeah. Real brainiac move here, buddy. Custom made electric chair. Folks, take a puff. We've witnessed all sorts of weirdness at the pawn shop, but this fella's cranked it up a notch. Check out his wild sell list. So tell us a little bit about him. We have Halloween retail stores. This is a custom made electric chair. There's a whole show if you guys want to see it. Sure, go watch show us. Hell yeah. I'm really into this kind of thing. This might be the new feature at my house on Halloween. Oh, just what we all need. A bedside toy that screams Halloween 24-7. No biggie, except it's art, not like living in a slasher fic or anything. Uh, so we're looking to get about $8,000. Brand new, they're just above nine. And that great. makes a lot of sense. Right. Buy a used one that's six years old. Well, the cool thing that. about this one is that they don't make them like this anymore. You're There's right, they many... don't. The new ones are digital. Well, guys, Mr. Ambitious over here is dead set on this mystery item. Heaven knows what his grand plan is, but Les has a style for a bargain. Thank you very much for bringing Thank it you. here. We appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, my bad damn it. I will just point that I gotta slap it back home, but you know, with Michigan being, you know, like the number one state for haunted houses and attractions and things like that. Elephant skull haggle. Oh, guess what? No fancy sofa, no blingy ring, and no one of a kind carta pedal? No worries. How about you trade an elephant skull for some greens? Because that's normal, right? The skull of an elephant. Really? Very unusual. It's very unusual. My best friend had it, passed away, and I inherited this one. It's where the tusks were. I understand that. It came from Africa? Yeah, right. Well, so. I can promise you nobody has ever brought in an elephant skull, yeah. ever. That I can Little tell unique. You. Ever wondered where one finds a thing like that? Well, surprise, surprise, there's a thriving market for massive elephant skulls. Yeah, you heard it right. Skull heads. A thousand. That's as low as I'm gonna go. Let me talk to my elephant. Expert. Africans are buying now for 2300 and the Asians are 1900 The good part was, it's worth the money. There is a demand for elephant skulls, but I'll be damned if I'm giving it away. Okay, peeps. When Les locks onto something, prepare for a solar eclipse, because he's not releasing his grip. Anyway, there's a plot twist in this pawn shop drama. I got $700, $100 bills waiting for me. $750. 700 and if you think it's worth $50 for you to schlep it home, it is. Schlep it. It is. Schlep it. I'll give it to you for seven. <laughs> you got a deal. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank Come you. right thank over you. here. We'll thank take you. care of you. All right. All right. Yeah. Mark, thank you. Bone rattler. Okay, people. The granddaddy of speed in the house. Ready to snatch up a drag racing car from the pawn shop? Who knew shuffleboard was just a warm up? This guy is an expert. He knows all about drag racers. So does Jeff. Jeff is my jeweler, but he's much more knowledgeable with engines than I am. The guy that sold it to me said it cost him 85000 to put it together. Probably clipping along at about 250 miles an hour. Fire this puppy up. I don't know how to start it. Gather around, youngsters. We got a drag racing sage here, boasting a mere 30 years under his belt. So the wisdom dump is here, as he schools the pawn shop owner. You know how to start him? Sure. I knew you did. How long have you been racing dragsters? For about uh, 30 years. <laughs> oh. Are you ready for this? I'm ready when you are. All right, Mr. Been There, Done That. Let's see if your drag racing tails can seal this deal or take a nosedive. Now, coming straight to the negotiation. 20 grand. 7,500? I don't think so. If you give me the money today, 15,000. I'll throw the skeletons in for free. We have a deal for 15000 I guess so. Thank you very much. Have a Enjoy good day. your new car. Mechanical bull. Ah, the good old days of Wild West bull riding and rugged cowboys. Some dude missed the memo that it's not exactly the trendiest scene nowadays. Time to catch up, y'all. Going for a ride in my parking lot, or what are we doing? Let's have a little fun, girl. We're trying to sell our mechanical bull. Why do you have it? A Western themed restaurant, bar, before, and uh, that was the theme. We put it, the bull in the, into the bar. Well, slap on those cowboy hats. We got ourselves a scene here. But seriously, who's taking bets on whether they can wrangle a decent price for that rodeo-style bull riding? Well, let's say you were to buy these brand new. How much do they cost? They cost around fifteen to 20000 How much do you want? 15000 So if I was to buy this brand new or buy this used from you, it's the same price. Rental companies rent these out for seven fifty a day. There's a lot of revenue potential. Ah, man, sad to see these alpha men taking back their bull home. But folks, hold on to your hats. Maybe Ashley has something else in her mind. 3,000 right now. 45. 31. 39, you pack it up. That's my bottom dollar. 35. 
before. I can't do it. Sorry, good luck. Dr. Death's van. Step right up, viewers. You've heard of Dr. Death, but today's highlight is the van that spotlights as the ride for assisted suicides. Because nothing says vacation like a one-way ticket, right? This is a 1968 Volkswagen okay. van owned by Dr. Death, Jack Kaborkian. By Dr. Death. This is the actual van that he did his first and several other assisted suicides in. Jack Kevorkian was an iconic figure in the city of Detroit. We're not aiming for a Valley of Chrome farewell tour this time. Mr. Big Bucks here wants a six-figure sum. Brace yourselves, because Les has his few concerns all queued up. It is a piece of history. Um, I like buying weird you won't find another one. The problem is, it doesn't make sense spend six figures on something like this for me. Well, you either love it or hate it. But I, I love it. This is definitely a piece of Detroit. A van oozing that delightful combo of creepiness and death vibes. So legit. However, why not throw in another expert opinion? Let's see how that went. So 10,000 ain't gonna buy it. No, I'm really, I'm in the six figure range. 20 grand? No. 25 grand. 30 grand. 50 grand? 30. One time. 50. 30. 30 cash right now. Bizarre bikini. Check out this granny of the century who strolls into the pawn shop with an elderly figure that has a lot to do with. Uh, I don't know. You have a look and maybe you decide. Which is the doll? <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> I'm undressing her. <laughs> What can I say? A really nasty looking woman, but a very cool item. Yep, that's about accurate. You just saw a long-legged granny in a bikini. All the efforts are done in the name of art. However, our granny here invested in this model. How much did you want for this thing? I'd like to get $500 for it. This thing is art. It's a very cool item, but not for that price. I mean, she's really cute. I mean, she's really fun to look at, but it's not going to be even close to 500 bucks. Never mind. That was going to be a deal breaker. Unless Les had some more quotes to add to the art piece, this stirs things up for the selling mix. Here, this woman was playing my game, and I was losing. 200. 190. I'll take it. We, will he stop? OK, schlep it home. You know, I heard my dad saying it wasn't worth the extra $10. Bullsh she wants 200. Latex vacuum bed. Look who's spicing up the pawn shop scene. This dynamic duo's got a latex vacuum fetish bed up for grabs. You know, just your average afternoon errand. Latex vacuum bed. A what? A latex, a latex vacuum, vacuum bed. bed. So you have sex with latex? Pretty much. Uh, it's like the autoerotic asphyxiation. It's pretty it much, is, yeah. Bobby J surprisingly knew exactly what this thing was. All right, I was wondering, who needs candle at dinners when you can have vacuum sealed intimacy? I'm not here to judge. However, here's a quick demonstration. So normally when Felix has his hand over his mouth, <laughs> normally what they like. I actually used it. Are you breathing? There we go. It's working. Everyone's a critic when it comes to, oh, what's the word? Uh, innovative sleeping arrangements. Yeah, there we go. And we aren't sure if that ever went up for the big sale. Used it. So how could you not want to do this with him? Because I don't want to suffocate. Um, it's not for everybody. I'm familiar with the bed. Very much so. Just imagine having sex now. He don't have to hold you. Perfect. Well, now we got that out of the way. <laughs> Time to go. No. My friend's laptop. Are you low on cash? How about you swipe your laptop, hoping to make a quick profit at the nearest pawn shop? If you want to give it a try, just watch what you're heading into. What the hell? You mean to tell me you don't stole my damn laptop and I don't blame them damn kids for this damn laptop? Oh, this damn laptop. That's how you don't blame me? We're supposed to be friends. You don't want me 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 to Oh, that tension, right, folks? However, our big boss Les was unable to fully comprehend the conflict. And he couldn't care less. These people were just up to making a fool of themselves. I think that these women were fighting over laptops. <laughs> But 
we, being a sucker for drama, sorted it all out. Apparently, somebody's valued belongings were stolen by their BFF. What chance do they have of surviving this unthinkable betrayal? All right, that's enough. That's enough. All this time, my laptop was missing, but I got my laptop. That's all that matters. All right. Earring error. In the dazzling world of pawn shops, we find a woman aiming to part ways with her prized earrings. But only if things were that simple, then there wouldn't be a whole show made out of it. I'm here to pawn these earrings. Okay. Trying to get $350 for them. Why do you need the money? It's none of your business why I need the money. Pawn my mother jewelry. We all know that our big boss here has quite a keen eye for the merchandise he deals with. And warning, you better watch out if you try to sell him a knockoff. These are real. They are real earrings. They're just not real diamonds. They are. No, they're yes, not. The they are real. How the you gonna tell me just by looking at my that they're not real? They're not real. As things were getting hot, the woman kept getting non-negotiable. That definitely makes a reality TV treat. Keep it coming, girls. Ladies that act like ladies are treated like ladies. No, it don't work like I ain't leaving this bitch till you give me my money. money. I need my mother Airbnb. Time to go. Stubborn guy. Our Mr. Clumsy here managed to turn his girlfriend's car all wrecked up. Now he's off to pawn his genius level ideas to fix the car and his relationship. I need to pay my court fees. I got a DUI, crashed my car. Well, her car. I took her car with a couple friends. You just need to get as much as you can. It's not your damn business. I'm, I'm, I'm here for you. All full of himself, he went all gangsta mode on Seth, trying to get money for two of his rings. Did it work? Nope. However, things were about to get more annoying. What's the highest you'd go? 900 bucks. That's ridiculous. Tell me what it is. No, don't tell me what to do. Stop, Stop talking. Stand behind me. Wait, what's, what's, what's the problem? To understand behind me. This is man, men talking right now. Our boy's respect for his girlfriend shines through as the negotiations heat up. Hold on to your seat, because this encounter was a true lesson in having proper manners. Maybe we should just take the money. It. Stop talking. Just Dude, stop talking. seriously, why are you Just such stop. an ass? No, you need to. No, I don't no. need to. You're so my you, store. It is my property. It's not your property. It's not your property. Do She's I tell your own your property what to do? Hopefully one day she'll wisen up, move on, and realize that this guy's a complete tool. Mother-daughter feud. Well, ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your liquor bottles for a heartwarming episode of Mother-Daughter Treasure Hunters. They had gathered some priceless junk to fund their world tour. So what you got? I got some really expensive stuff. Show me. Some old liquor bottles. Some old albums. Stamp book. Don't you think he worth something? No. You got a whole lot of nothing going on over there. But wait. Les examines their items and deadpans. Sorry, ladies. It's all junk. No worth. The things took a swift left from there, guys. Told you it wasn't worth nothing. You need to watch your trap because this worth everything to me. It don't matter. They don't want it. This is not junk, okay? So don't you comment on I told you. So you better not don't. to come here. You better we don't go there. You better don't. You better don't. It's like watching a comedy where emotions run high over little treasures. They both argue fiercely about sentimental items. Talk about teaching your kids some manners. I will kill you your it. ass. I'm your mama. You better die. How the heck is you better dumb? No, you get the f off my f I thought it was kind of funny watching the mother and daughter argue with each other. Okay, okay, okay. okay. All right, that's enough. That's you don't enough. know who the f you Body slam. Our guy claims his grandma's ring is a lost treasure. Well, that part's for Ashley to decide whether it's real or something that came out of a cereal box. How much are you looking for? Is this enough to pay rent? How much is your rent? 300. Okay. Um, do you have anything else? Because this unfortunately is not real. What you mean it's not real? It's not real gold. Well, basically, I sit up here and waste my time talking to you. You don't waste your time. Oh dear, Mr. Sad Story. You've really painted yourself into a corner now. It was almost as if he was starring in his own drama series. Oh, I just need my rent. I need to speak with somebody else because you irritate me flat out. I'm trying to help you solve like, what your you issue. Like, you I'm mean? trying to help you solve like your this, issue. Like, lower your voice. This guy's acting really erratic and it's making me really nervous. Hold on tight, because here come the Powerpuff Boys to rescue our protagonist from his own soap opera. What a gimmick. A day he's gonna remember for a while. Don't right, put your hand you in your No, you got my shit by yourself, my man. Bitch, I'll be back, bitch. You talking that 
Now get the hell out of here. He was lucky I have other things on my mind, or I would have beat him to a pulp. PlayStation. In a stunning twist, our lovable, larger-than-life customer walks into the pawn shop dreaming of snagging a PS3. Let's hope the controller can keep up with this enthusiasm. How much are your PlayStation 3s? How much you want to spend? You got 70 bucks. Can't let him go for 70, my man, unfortunately. I've seen him for 70 to 80 dollars in other pawn shop. Does it come with a warranty? It comes with an as-is warranty. Unless no. you'd like to purchase an additional I, warranty, which I'll I'd just, like to help you with. This is bull Our six-pack gamer needs some physical exercise rather than video games. Mirror, mirror on the wall? Who needs a jog more than them all? I need a PlayStation 3 for $70. I saw him for 100 bucks. That is ridiculous. All I got is 70. I want somebody else to talk to around here. Well, there's only gonna be one other person you're about to talk to, and if you keep your voice raised like that, we'll be more than happy to speak with you. And here's where you might consider scheduling that eye wash. Oh boy. Up next could rival a comedy sketch, complete with unexpected twists and turns. Get out of here. Sounds like a ride, big boy. Big boy. Ride, big boy. Ride, big boy. Ride, big boy. Push me. Here we go, big boy. Here we go. Have a good day. What is all that about? What you want to do? I come down this my level, be so ass down here. What? Think you all that, bitch? Do right. Ashley fires. So, guess what? There was a worker at the pawn shop who some folks thought might be stealing stuff. Ashley got wind of it and had a little investigation on her hands. You said you wanted to know if Tressa asked me to put anything else on the internet? Yeah. Well, she did. She did? Another watch. Are you kidding? Nope. I'll take care of it. Don't even put it on the internet. Okay. I have to check with Brian first to see if Tressa got permission to pull the watch from the display case. Right when Ashley was busy being a detective, the sneaky thief decided to drop in. What wonderful timing! Well, since you're here, time to do some explanation. I didn't ask him to put it online yet. I didn't ask so him. So he wouldn't just offer it. Right. You said to come to one of you guys. Well, before I would have bought it, I would have came to you but guys. But you already asked him to put it on the internet. No, I said, was it a possibility? I pulled it out. I okay, you went around the bush and kind of asked him. No, I'm still not 100% sure if I wanted to buy it. All righty then. You're going home because you were not hired to make CEO level decisions. But wait. There has to be more about this situation. You're fired. You're fired. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I said I wasn't even sure if I was no. going to. It's fine. I literally told everyone that you weren't as big of a bitch. I was wrong. Excuse me? Get I the f out of here. I Get out of here. Let's fight. So how much can you give me, man? 20 bucks? 20 dollars? What the hell you mean? I'm more or less healthy than anything. Man, I'm gonna need more than 20 dollars for this, man. Of course. They're giving you exactly what it's worth, aren't they? So just take the money and run. But anyway, here is how our man decides to handle the situation. Tells me anybody buying any Jerry from here, don't get no more Jerry from hey. here because this hey. ain't good. Hey, come on. I played this game before. I know this was a scam. You broke my trust. And because of that, Justin, you're fired. Replica. Oh, boy. Get your wrists ready for this one. A man walks in with the Audemars Piguet watch, and Les was in all mood to get his hands on it. How about six? Four thousand. Nah, I don't think I can go that low. You want to meet in the middle? I'll go forty-five hundred. No, I need to get the five out of it. Sorry. All right. Appreciate your time. Forty-six hundred. However, our pawn king did pull out these big bucks, but he was sure. Duh, he was. But hey, just wait, cause Seth might have a different opinion. So let me check it out real quick. Oh. Coming up counterfeit. Oh, bull oh yeah? Look at it right here. It says do not purchase. It's a known counterfeit. What? Did our pawn maestro get scammed? Well, wait. They call the seller back in for another purchase to trap him down. Let's see how that goes. You mother coming into my store selling a that's not real. Here's the way it works. Either give me my money back or go to jail. I bought them, and now, you know, I've got taken on them, too. I believe you. I mean, I'll give you your money back. Unreal diamond. Regular day at a pawn shop, until this woman came in claiming that her niece bought earrings from the shop, but one earring lost its diamond. FYI, this is about to get interesting. Watch this. She bought them from us? Yeah. Antique necklace. A man strolls in, claiming an antique necklace. Now, he faces the daunting challenge of convincing the Pawn King less that it's the real deal. 
<laughs> Good luck, buddy. It's been passed down from generation to generation to generation. Now it's mine, and I'm trying to put you in the game with this crystal antique rosary. So how much can I get? Well, you can't get anything. It's not diamonds. It's not gold. It's just crystals. Well, I ain't no expert, but definitely that necklace was nowhere near being called antique. Mr. Too Much Full of Himself was clearly up to no good. How much would you pawn this for? I won't take that in pawn because we only take precious metal. It should be precious to you. Why should it be precious to me? Because it's an antique. Didn't you hear that part? No, I can't take it. I'm sorry. But I think you need to work something out with me, man. This dude just thinks that saying antique will make his necklace any more valuable. <laughs> what a joke. How about we let the jewel expert take care of this one? No deal. Deal. How much you gonna give me for? I'm gonna start running away out the door. Hey, hold on, man. Hold on, hold on, brother. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on, man. Hold on. I can leave on my own. Hey, what are y'all looking at? What you looking at? Laptop room. Tiffany watch. A man's got an antique Tiffany watch and a burning desire to sell it to the pawn queen, Ashley. But hold on to your goats. There's a twist coming. I've already done a little bit of research on this thing. This watch is 160 years old plus, at least. And you've had offers of 3,200 and you want more. I do. It's gorgeous. There's old mine cut diamonds on it. This could be worth thousands of dollars. I need my dad's help. Our jewelry selling farmer decides to bring a goat as his lucky charm while dealing with the boss lady. But the real question remains, is the Tiffany watch the real deal? This watch could be worth a fortune. Does it say Tiffany in it? No, we're inside. That's the problem. So, a couple things. Why would Tiffany not want to buy it? They don't actually do that at Tiffany's in New York, so they won't authenticate it. They don't authenticate items that aren't genuine, sir. Like this cheap knockoff. You better go put that back in your pocket and get going now. The movement in the watch is not Tiffany. Tiffany did make their own movements. Another thing that makes us believe that it's not Tiffany the is the way the diamonds, diamonds are set. set. 160 years ago? Tiffany would have normally set them better More professionally. even back then. I could pop it back on, it's no big deal. It should pop on pretty easy. No cables. Here's- How about 25 bucks? 150 like I said. Tw no, we can't go for that one. PS3. This dude looks like a goon from GTA. He came to the pawn shop to reclaim his PS3. I know, folks. The description of the man makes the whole scene more interesting. I'm just trying to get my I got a brand new PlayStation 3 up in this bitch. You know what it is. Let me just get my in the line like everybody else. I'm just saying, I've been standing. Stop yelling. What the are you yelling about? I'm just saying, I want you to be able to hear me through this window. That's kind, even. Give your slip, get your item, and get out, bro. But wait, there is a twist we all have been waiting for from our protagonist. This ain't mine, is this the wrong one right here? This, this is, I don't know who the it is, it ain't mine. Got me this this. Look, 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 mine's brand new out the box. What is this? Yours. The minute he brought it in, we bagged it and labeled it. Oh man, why do they always have to threaten the old man when things can be sorted through negotiation? But anyway, Here's the inevitable. Hey, get your hands up off me, big fella. Straight the f up, boy. Get your hands off of me right now. I swear to God, if y'all don't give me my PlayStation, I call 30 goons up here right call now. Him. I call 30, 40 goons call up here him. right now. Call him. Meet my lawyer. A woman storms into the pawn shop, swearing their diamond earring and turning her ear green. And guess who's with her? A lawyer, no less. I look at his earring that he says is turning zero green, and it's a fake diamond with a fake metal. This is not the correct earring for the receipt. I got my lawyer with me. This is wrong. Oh dear, Miss Drama, it's not that simple. Your slip doesn't quite match the description, so getting that refund might be trickier than you thought. Would you like to meet my attorney? I want my money. My attorney will escort you out. You better not put his hand on me. Then you better turn around with your two legs and walk out yourself. I'm not walking nowhere. Want to bet? Well, lady, it was time for you and your mannequin of a lawyer to walk out the store while keeping your respect where it belongs. Get out. You don't just tell me what to do. Get out. Yeah, you know, took my money. You showed me a bold earring. Got my ear turning colors. I don't care if he had 10 lawyers in here because we didn't make his ear green. It's just a hey, Give me a time for Oh, man. Man, why you break that man? I did not drop it on accident, man. I didn't break it. I thought it was a Jew, man. Oh, that's good. Now you should have that. Where's Nikki? The lady has arrived at the pawn shop saying one of the workers valued her earrings. And now she's just demanding the estimated price. 
What a mind wreck, I gotta say. Who'd you talk to? Nicole. Over the phone. Yes, ma'am. But we don't see them over the phone. She is lying. Can I see your merchandise while I'm at work and while you're sitting in your living room? You need to come in. You need to evaluate your earrings. We need to test them. Where Nikki at? Nikki. Nikki, Nicole. Ashley, ever the detective, was in suspicion mode, attempting to dissect the situation. However, the customer's reaction swiftly threw a wrench into her gears. Listen, it's real diamonds. All I know is I need my 400. I'm looking at the diamonds, and I know right off the bat the weight is just not gonna make it. I can do 185. So what you're saying is you're not gonna give me that $400, right? No, I'm not, and you're not gonna come in here demanding money from me. Yes, the I am, because that's what I called for. Well, it appears our lady has raised some eyebrows about her sanity. The idea of consulting Nikki to identify this loudmouth was now on the table. Where did Fred Excuse me. This is Nikki. And Nikki, she claims she talked to you at 10 o'clock this morning. I don't even know her. I need my mother money right now. She was very confused, but I know one thing for certain. Nana needed to go go. Phone call lady. This one time, an elderly woman disrupted the quiet at the pawn shop with her booming phone call. This lady was probably angry with someone else and had decided to make this pawn shop a stage for her little vent session. D. Two older folks enter the pawn shop with 1970s computers. They hope to sell them to fund a trip out west. Let's see if they were able to enjoy the blast from the past. Got some equipment here. So how much are you looking for? About $900. To be honest, if you bought these new, it's about like 400 bucks. We need more than that. Yeah, we need more than that. Um, what I can offer you is zero. Zero. Things took a sudden turn. And honestly, it felt like we stumbled into some reality TV treat. Buckle up, because this pawn shop just got a lot more interesting. The f you mean zero? Most people don't get that aggravated when they bring in like ancient artifacts. Yeah, we people collecting stuff. Oh, they're antiques now. They're we'll take 800. Zero. That's the many times do I need to tell no, you? We're not interested in it. Leave the I store, I'm not taking it. Store. Well, fellas, y'all better just use it to scroll some pictures of the out west, because I probably think that trip's now canceled. F you and f you. F you do. Oh man! I thought it was you, man. You didn't have that. Put it in the dumpster. She slapped quotes in this pawn shop. Her ring most dramatically. What are you doing? He wanted uh, an appraisal on this ring. On my ring? Why'd you take my ring? Well, I wanted to see how much it was worth. Bull. You're a liar. Why'd you take my ring? Ouch! Painful lesson learned, folks. Our big boy now knows the golden rule. Never pawn your wife's ring without her permission. Priceless wisdom, I must say. Have a good day. Pacifier pawn. Seth, our pawn shop hero, encounters quite the character of a customer eager to part with both a TV and a ring. But wait, what's in her mouth? I'm Seth. Are you cute? Um, yeah. Mm. So how can I help you? I'm just bringing, you know, my TV and my ring. Trying to at least walk out with 800. Let me see your ring. That's right, lady. Our Seth here wasn't going to crack open with that pacifier or your flirting skills. How about we cut to the chase and look at the valuables? Her ring was pretty nice. It has diamonds. It's 10 karat gold. Her TV was relatively nice. You used to answer my question. I said, what do you want? I know. I said, I'm good. So you need a loan or you want to sell it? Loan. Loan? About 300 bucks. Want to taste my ring? No. Really what did she just say? Well, even if the sun arises from the west, I ain't putting that in my mouth. How about we look for someone who might? Would you suck on my pacifier for 20 bucks? You can lick it, I know you want to. Yeah, you can. Ready? <laughs> Push fight. Two buddies square off in a pawn shop brawl over one friend's attempt to pawn the other's beloved PlayStation without permission. This calls for drama. That took my PS, you trying to pawn my Yo shot, get my money back. You know him? Yeah, that's my roommate. He tried to pawn my your shop, trying to get some money off, but I want my He owe me money. It's mine. Hey, do me a favor. We're not going to scream, okay? What's happening here? This ain't your hotel room, spoiled punks. You're just creating a ruckus. 
Y'all better watch that tone and listen to the pawn majesty. Angelo Steve, is that his? This between, yes or no? I mean, we're just trying to handle that, it ourselves. That's fine. Steve, I'm going to ask you one more time. Is it Angelo's or yours? It used to be his. Okay. He owe me money. What am I supposed Steve? to do? My we pay bills. Oh my Come on, I ain't paying all right guys you probably want to take your business outside because there are some customers here who are not in a mood to listen to your story come take can i see it come with me you know i'm a pawnbroker i'm not a kindergarten teacher you guys go talk about it amongst yourselves and when you figure it out then come back inside okay until then i don't want to hear you arguing you grown men not kids go on all right free grab the girlfriend decided to pawn her boyfriend's Xbox, and now he's on a crusade to rescue it. Lesson learned, right? Pawning is such a brilliant way to solve everything. My girlfriend, she came up here and she got rid of my Xbox 360, and I came up here to get it back. Okay, you have a ticket? Um, I can tell you her name, and you can just give me my 360. I can't 360. give you any information about somebody else's account. You okay. just need to give me my stuff. No. But our man here forgot that this store needs a police report for such incidents. So how about you keep your volume down, gamer? <laughs> Instead, this is what he does. Can I just have my we can sell you another one. Well, let me just look for one that I want to okay, grab. Okay, you go that way. Wait right hey, here. Up to there, and bro. I'll sell you one. Stop right here. No, I ain't no And I'll selling. sell you one for two hundred dollars. No, I can grab one for free. Excuse me? Yeah, you, you can heard. do what? What in the world was this dude thinking? He was running around like it was a jogging park. But hold on to your seats. Big Joe was here for a run too. Hey! Get out of here. Get the f out. Now. All right, I'll f Don't ever step back. You're going to make me move. Get out of my face. Nice Bye.